Well, we are back from the October international break for a huge weekend of EFL Championship action. The start of a three-game week and three prediction shows in eight days as we look ahead to match week 10 and all 12 fixtures taking place between Friday and Sunday this weekend. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as me. If you are, please do chuck a thumbs up and get involved as always down in the comments below. We're going to preview and predict all 12 matches and we'd like you guys to do exactly the same. Let us know your score predictions down in the comment section. And if you beat or match my overall score across the matches, you will get a shout out on Sunday night when we do our recap looking ahead to match week 11, which is a full midweek fixture list to come on Tuesday and Wednesday. That will be out late on Sunday because of the whole City Sunderland game being a 3 p.m. on Sunday. But for now, we're going to have a quick look back before we move into double figures and have a look back at match week nine, where, spoiler alert, I didn't reach double figures. And the reason for it was this very first game, Sunderland versus Leeds United. If that ball hadn't been, well, I don't even know how it went in. Let's not talk about that now. But I predicted 2-1 Leeds it ended up being 2 all. And that means that I am now in fifth place instead of third this weekend, which is very frustrating. I got eight points overall, perfect scores for Sheffield United's win against my club Luton Town and the championship's favourite scoreline between Pompey and Oxford, as well as a point for correct outcomes for Derby and for Norwich's home wins, with a lot of other home bankers letting most of us down. For you guys in the comments section though, three of you matched my score, four of you beat it. BPK, Akshay and Darren all level with me on eight. A couple of perfect scores in there for each of you as well. In double figures though, we've got Ojo on 10. Brilliant effort given the results that weekend. And Nigel and this guy joined second on 11. This guy, it just infuriated me. Overtook me thanks to that goal that Mesdier let in on Friday night. We were on 8 and 11 the opposite way round. Now it's this guy who gets 11 with that perfect score for Leeds. At top of the tree, the one who deserves all the credit this weekend is Sam with 14 points. Perfect scores for Derby, for Plymouth, for Sheffield United and for Pompey Oxford. You get 14 points with four perfect scores. A brilliant effort in match week nine. But can you and anyone else back it up in match week 10? And can anyone else get to the top of the tree? Well, let's find out starting with a huge Yorkshire derby on Friday night. Again, we will be here live watching along on the podcast channel. It is Leeds United versus Sheffield United, two sides that have started the season pretty well. 18 games played between them, only one has ended in defeat. Sheffield United are up to second and would be top if it weren't for points deductions. They are the only side still unbeaten in the EFL Championship. And I've got to be honest, while my Luton side aren't in great nick at the minute, they absolutely played us off the park. A couple of weeks ago at Bramall Lane. They were just fantastic. A 2-0 victory. Didn't flatter them. If anything, they probably should have had 3 or 4. In the first half, they just came out the traps firing. They've got a brilliant defensive line set up. And Raksaki is a player I'm a massive fan of. And to have him at the club for the season is only going to benefit them. So, brilliant from them. Of course, it will be a poignant weekend for them as well. A chance for us to pass on our condolences to the friends and the family of George Bulldog. Obviously a Sheffield United legend. I'm sure their fans will have a touching tribute prepared as well as for the next home game as well. Sheffield United though, of course, traveling to Leeds who, well, should be two points better off than they are. They drew two all against Sunderland in that Friday night game. A brilliant game of championship football. And Leeds United generally did an awful lot right despite conceding early. A really good away performance and it looked like they were getting the job done. I do feel a little bit, I've got to be honest, for... Uh, for Mesdier because the ball did take a nick but you can't let that in you've got to get your body behind it and at least get something on it to keep it out an incredible goal to finish a crazy game and it's the only reason Leeds aren't just one point off the top and one point behind Sheffield United going into this so probably puts a little bit more pressure on them because although they're hitting form and they're unbeaten in four they've got to win this game to get level on points now and go above probably on goal difference so there is a bit more onus on them to attack Sheffield United haven't conceded in six. They've been remarkable defensively, but not really hit fire in front of goal. They've had odd individual brilliant performances, but not a brilliant team one just yet going forward. But this game, though, is so tough to call. I genuinely don't know what to go for. There's going to be a lot of tight predictions here. I am going to go for Sheffield United to concede. I am going to go for Leeds United to win. I had them to win the title pre-season, so they've got to win games like this. I'm going for Leeds United to nick it by two goals to one on Friday night. 
Let's move on to Saturday, and we've got four early kickoffs this time. Weirdly, the Luton Derby's not on TV. We'll get to that in a moment. We start with Cardiff City versus Plymouth Argyle. Managerless Cardiff at the time of recording on Tuesday afternoon. The last week or so, Slavon Bilic had been the favourite. It suddenly changed to Tony Mowbray today, which fingers crossed means he's in better health than when he left the role at Birmingham a few months back. Cardiff did get a point away at Bristol City on a Sunday before the international break. It was a decent performance and Oli Tanner's goal was very good, but while they had a threat on the break, there were still those little signs of frailty in defence. It was better for them as a week, though. Obviously, since they've lost Errol Balut, they've picked up four points and they've stopped conceding as many goals, which is crucial. For Plymouth, we've talked about this a lot already this season. The away form has been a disaster, which is going to be a problem for them here because the only games where they've really competed on the road are the games where they've been able to sit in behind the ball, like Burnley and West Brom, the top teams. When there's a chance for them to come out, they often get caught. At home, though, they've been brilliant, and that was backed up against Blackburn, a late moment of magic from Morgan Whitaker. but those attacking players just starting to come to fruition and look to threat. I know it took them to the 97th minute, but they deserve to beat Blackburn. They were excellent, and a lot of people are going to have to give an apology to Rooney soon because they've adapted tactically as well, something I didn't know they were capable of either. But the players that have come in have done really well, and in the end, it was a deserved result. So big credit to them, but away from home is a very different story. So whether or not Cardiff have got a new manager in with their improved defensive record and based on the fact that Plymouth have been poor on the road, I'm going to go for Cardiff to win this game. I've got a feeling they might have a manager in by then, but either way, I'm going to go for Cardiff City by two goals to nil. Just a bit of a hunch on that one. Then we move on to the big one this weekend. Not sure why it's not the actual TV game. It is the M1 derby between Luton Town and Watford. And these sides have had differing starts to the season. However, as Watford come to Luton Town in a game where they did lose last time they were in the championship, but they're a very different Watford side now with a bit more fight and a bit more spirit under Tom Cleverley. There is definitely a chalk and cheese feel about them from home to away from home. Another good win at home to Middlesbrough, another comeback from behind, which you've got to give them credit for. It wasn't their best performance. They didn't create many great chances, but again, Borough struggled to put theirs away and Watford, they took their chances. They stayed in the game, something we've accused them in previous years of not doing. Wasn't as good as their performance against Sunderland as a whole. But to be fair to them, they managed to get the win. And at home, they found their way to get results. On the road, though, against Preston and Norwich in their last two away games, they've been abysmal. However, they're playing against the Luton team, who generally this season have tried to set up in a different way, have tried to be a bit more methodical and higher up the pitch, keep in possession. But when they've got caught, it's gone very, very wrong. Now, that was proven against Oxford at home in a two-all draw where it could have been four or five. And against Sheffield United away from home last time out, where we lost 2-0, got outplayed, could have been 4 or 5. So I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried for this fixture. My hope is that the crowd's going to be up for a game in a way it hasn't been since the Premier League last season. Maybe the players are just going to play that slightly more direct pass, try and get the crowd on board early. I think we'll see a more loot and s performance from two years ago, rather than from what they're trying to do this season. And maybe that international break has been used to find a happy medium, which is going to be needed with Watford, Sunderland and West Brom, the next three home matches. I can't go for a win as much as I want to. There is a part of me that thinks that if it clicks for loot and they go direct, if Morris is fitting back in, that they will win the game. But I'm going to sit on the fence for this one. I'm a bit worried about it. I'm hoping it won't be a defeat. I'm going for the championship's favourite scoreline. One goal apiece at Kenilworth Road. Thankfully, though, no Liam Walsh to get sent off. Let's move on to Oxford United versus West Brom, which is the TV game, weirdly. Oxford on the back of three successive draws, but a really solid start to the season. That two-all draw at Luton I mentioned, they were fantastic. One of the best teams I've watched at Kenilworth Road in a long time. Away at Pompey, I said they'd probably be quite happy with that result, and from 1-0 down, they certainly would have been. They gave up a lot of chances against Pompey, which was a concern. But they've been a very different side at home this year. Very tactically structured, very organised. We've seen a lot of nil-nils, one-nils, low-scoring games. Their home record defensively is much better. But West Brom are the masters of defending. I know they had that weird game against Sheffield Wednesday. But the three victories before that, all with clean sheets. A nil-nil against Millwall last time. Frustrating again in front of goal. Not always consistent with their chances. But defensively, you don't often see them concede many. So... 
For me, I think any score above one all is probably ruled out of this match. It's whether it's a nil-nil or a one-nil either way. We weirdly had three nil-nils in match week nine, which I don't think will happen again. So I'm going to go for the big boys to nick it. I just think Oxford have been unbeaten at home. They've been so strong and so good. If ever there's a team to do it, it's Carlos Corbrands. 1-0 West Bromwich Albion. And the final early kickoff is a game between two sides that had a very different last weekend before the international break. It is Preston North End versus Coventry City. Both went into match week nine off the back of brilliant 3-0 midweek home wins. Preston backed it up with a 0-0 draw away at Burnley where, in fairness to them, they didn't show a huge amount of ambition, but they restricted Burnley to one shot on target. They probably had the best chance of the game, Preston. And while they didn't have a lot of the ball, they did a really decent job. It was just a solid, gutsy Preston performance. And Paul Heckingbottom is starting to produce a few of those. That's three clean sheets in four now for them. Albeit the game in between was a nightmare defensively against Millwall. For Coventry, look, it's what you want as a fan, isn't it? They lost the game trying to win it. Late on against Sheffield Wednesday, a 93rd minute goal. They just haven't got their shooting boots on at the minute. They're not consistently taking chances and they're having a spell where they're just conceding silly goals, which to be fair, Coventry generally have at the start of every season. The only solace I'm sort of taking from this is last time Coventry and Luton both started pretty poorly. They ended up in the playoff final two years ago, so maybe it'll be the same again, I don't know. A disappointing weekend for them. I think we would expect Coventry to try and have a bit more of the ball. Preston are going to try and play on the counter as they often do. They're without Osmagic, who has been probably their main goal threat this year. He's banned for an extensive period due to that fight, and rightly so from a neutral point of view. And I think that makes it a bit more difficult for them. I'm going to go for them to get a goal. But I actually think it probably suits Coventry being on the road this week. I'm going to go for them to nick this one by two goals to one. But in truth, 1-0 the other way wouldn't shock you. It's about whether Coventry take their chances. On to the 3 p.m. kickoffs, of which there are only six this weekend. And we start with Blackburn Rovers versus Swansea City. Blackburn, after that positive start, successive away defeats into the international break. We mentioned it. Away from home, it wasn't going to stay consistent. And I know a lot of people base a lot on six or eight games, but never look at the table before 10. Disappointment away at Plymouth Argyle in a game where, yes, they almost snatched a point, but they were thoroughly second best. They gave up some great opportunities. And on another day, Plymouth could have had four or five and it wouldn't have flattered them. So defensively, after the hammering against uh, Coventry as well, a little bit of work to do. But we know the difference between home and away sides with Blackburn and particularly when it's John Eustace because he did it with Birmingham a couple of years ago. The home record was the hallmark success. And while we talked about whether teams would maybe follow that Preston model with 10 men, shut up shop, try and defend against them. Actually for Swansea, they want to keep the ball. They want to play out from the back. To be fair to them, they've been low scoring and they've not conceded many this year. But if ever there's a team, they're going to give it up against this Blackburn. So I weirdly feel this is going to be a bit of a thriller, even though Swansea's record defensively would suggest it won't be. I think they're going to give up chances. I think Blackburn will hit them. They'll press high. John Eustace will have the game plan for this one. And I'm weirdly going to go for it to be one of the high scoring games of the week. I'm going for Blackburn to win by three goals to one. Continue their good home form at Ewood Park. Into the second half. And we need to start this game with a quick message because it is Middlesbrough versus Bristol City. And of course, I'm sure the footballing world will join us in sending our best wishes to Liam Manning, who has to take a leave of absence in horrific circumstances. Not something you'd wish on anyone. So best wishes to him and his family. Let's talk about the football, though, because for Bristol City, it is draws galore. We've mentioned a lot of the same problems this season, conceding late goals, which, to be fair, hasn't happened in the last few matches, but also not putting games away. They did well after they conceded against Cardiff. They came back strongly, but haven't really created many chances where they've looked like scoring consistently. And again, that has been a bit of an Achilles heel. Tommy Conway leaving, not helping that. And he is in the lineup for the visitors this weekend, isn't he? Because he has gone to Middlesbrough, who again against Watford, probably should have been a couple of goals up. Didn't take all their chances. It stayed 1-0. And Watford found a way back into it late on. Again, frustration for them after they just got going with back-to-back -back victories. For Borough, they're going to have to be brilliant defensively this season, which largely at home they have been, because they don't look like they're going to score fluently again. It's been a solid start, if not a spectacular one. There's, it's going to be hard for there not to be disruption at Bristol City this week. 
I think I'm going to go for Borough to edge it. I was leaning towards a championship's favourite scoreline, but in the circumstances, it's going to be a tough one for Bristol City. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Middlesbrough in this game. In our next game, we've got a bit of a mid-table battle between two sides that kept a clean sheet before the international break. It is Millwall versus Derby County. Let's talk about Millwall because away at West Brom, they restricted them to not a great deal. The best chances of the game probably fell to Millwall, but they only had 20% of the ball. We talked earlier in the season about Millwall maybe being a bit more expansive, being in more thrillers than we expected. Very much reverted to type now, haven't they? Set pieces and counter attacks whilst not having a lot of the ball, soaking up pressure away at the big teams. And to be fair to them, they've done okay so far this year, but maybe a suggestion that we're seeing a bit more of the old Millwall. Just four goals conceded in the last six and three blanks drawn during that time as well. For Derby, another one of those sides who have been magnificent at home. Genuinely magnificent. Four wins out of five on the road. It's been a very different story. Yet to get a result. Looked good on the opening day against Blackburn, didn't they? Went a bit gung-ho in the end. And they've had tough away games since. The last two are Sheffield United and Sunderland. Both fairly narrow defeats. And they started well in that Sunderland game before conceding. But against QPR at home, another good result. By the way, what a header from Curtis Nelson. Love a powerful header going back across goal like that. Harness got the goal a minute after to basically put the game to bed. And it was just another solid Derby County home display. It's been a really good season for them. Clean sheets galore at home. And you would expect this to be a low scoring game. I wonder if Derby will maybe try and come out, think that they can win this one. Or will they just sit behind the ball and accept a result? The onus is going to be on Millwall to break them down, to take advantage of set pieces. I'm going to be bold in this one. I initially went for 1-0 Millwall. I'm going to change that. I'm going for 0-0. As we move on to a game between two of the bottom three going into this weekend and a game where we'll be looking over our shoulder if Luton don't beat Watford. It is Queen's Park Rangers versus Pompey, two sides that haven't really got going in different ways this season. For QPR, it's been the same old story, not able to regularly score goals. Again, two of their last three they've not scored. The home game against Hull was just bizarre. And at the other end, they are a little bit leaky at the moment as well, which is not ideal. Not as leaky though as Portsmouth, who are the first side to concede 20 goals this season. Obviously the six against Stoke didn't help that. A one all draw against Oxford stopped the rot. They were better, they created more chances, but they didn't have the best chances in the world. And ultimately, they've got to be trying to win those sorts of games if they want to stay up. It's very difficult having lost Colby Bishop not long before the season, a huge goal threat for them. And it clearly is a problem, isn't it? I know they've managed to put a few in, but three of those were on the opening day. And since then, they've just been conceding goals galore. We mentioned they had that rotten start, but then the six against Stoke was a real hammer blow. And it makes this game so hard to call. QPR will be looking at it and thinking, we've got to win this to kickstart the season. Pompey will be thinking, if we can avoid defeat again, we stay in touching distance. What do I go for? I'm torn between 1-0 QPR and a championship's favourite scoreline. But because Pompey have looked a bit more of a goal threat on the road, I'll go for them to score as well. I am going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline. One apiece at Loftus Road, but both of them could really do with a victory. As we move back up to Yorkshire for a game that I actually think will be one of the best of the weekend. It is Sheffield Wednesday versus Burnley. Sheffield Wednesday with that magnificent late win away at Coventry City. Really good performance from them on the road. Created some good chances on the counter. They just look a decent side. And I know people are a little worried after the start of the year, but they've found form now, haven't they? Two wins in three, seven points in total. If you take out that Luton defeat, it's been excellent ever since the first international break. They're back up in mid-table, and that's what they need. A solid season where they haven't got to look down. For Burnley, definitely solid at the back. Only one goal conceded in their last five. But struggling at the other end. Created next to nothing against Preston really were pretty poor going forward it must be said and again we said it against Oxford didn't create a lot a home to Plymouth 1-0 but it was far from vintage they're not creating bundles of chances they're doing enough at the moment they're staying in the mix but as I mentioned last time out this is how Vincent Company's Burnley started everyone talked about the free-flowing football at the end most of the early weeks of the season they were drawing 1-1 nicking 1-0s 2-0s here and there they weren't vintage and then they grew into the year and it seems to be the same way in this one. We've seen that Sheffield Wednesday can be very strong at home to some of the big boys. We saw it against West Brom. They find a way to carry an attacking threat. And Burnley could be a little susceptible to the break in that regard. But they are solid at the back. 
there's part of me that wants to go for a one all again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try and be bold this week. I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday to win again. I think if they're at their best, they're a match for anyone on their day, particularly at Hillsborough. The three o'clock kickoff will help the atmosphere too. So I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday just by two goals to one and Burnley's perfect defensive record from the last three games to just drift away in this one. The final game on Saturday is a big one for Stoke City. They host Norwich City. Of course, their last home game after a pretty dull start under Nasi Palak was a 6-1 victory against Pompey where every shot they hit basically went in the top corner. Tom Cannon found a little bit of form. It was back to normal service away at Swansea though, or I say that, they did a little better defensively, albeit they gave up quite a lot of chances. On another day, might have lost by a goal or two. But they kept the little unbeaten run going, which is important. And a clean sheet has been long overdue there. I'm still not convinced by the managerial change. I'm still not sure it's the right decision. And the performances have yet to convince me, if I'm being honest. For Norwich, yet another one of those sides. Magnificent at home, away from home concerns. I know they beat Derby last time, but three of the five goals in that game shouldn't have stood. They battered a whole City side that just gave them gift after gift after gift. And they should have won it by more than four. But I just think away from home, it's going to be a different story. Their away record has been poor for some time now. It was last season as well. And it gives Stoke an opportunity. There's part of me that thinks this is going to be an absolute thriller because Stoke scored six in their last home game. Norwich have been scoring goals galore this season. Bar the away game against Swansea. I have to go for there to be goals, but I can't pick a winner. So I'm going to go for a double of the championship's favourite scoreline. We'll chuck a 2-2 draw in here. Bit of a thriller. I just don't think Norwich can defend on the road. And Stoke, I haven't seen a lot that impress me under Nasi Palak so far. I know they won 6-1 against Pompey, but otherwise, no consistency again. And we move on to the final game on Sunday. The side that Norwich, well, absolutely hammered last time out. It is Hull City versus Sunderland. Hull City lost 4-0 at Norwich. They were abysmal defensively. Had one or two chances, but this is the Tim Water way. This is what he did at Hamburg. This is what we were expecting from the start of the season. Lots of goals for, lots of goals against. Terrible days, brilliant days and inconsistency. They're not going to finish as high up the table as they did under Liam Rossini. But they're going to be thrilling to watch for the neutral. You can't complain. For Sunderland, fairly fortuitous, I think we'd say, to nick the point late on against Leeds United. An absolutely ridiculous goal at the end. But they won't care. Gives them a good point. Keeps them top of the table. And to be fair to them, they've started the season really well generally. The one concern for them yet again will be the last couple of away performances. They were really poor at Plymouth against Watford. They couldn't find a way to put chances away. But this is a game that's tailor-made for them. Whole City will play out from the back. They'll take risks. They'll invert the fullbacks. Sunderland have got quality and whip on the counter-attack. Pat Roberts is having a great start to the season. Mundell on the other side. A couple of dives aside has looked very good. And if they can win the ball 25, 30 yards out with some of the attacking midfield talent they've got, they're going to have chances to score goals. I actually think this could be a real demolition job for Sunderland. Could go the other way if Hull City score first in this game. I just think that Hull play into Sunderland's hands. I really think they get a big away win here. And I'm going to throw in my bold prediction of the weekend. Might be wrong. Nothing against Hull personally. I'm going to go for Sunderland to win by four goals to one at the MKM. So with that out of the way, let's have a quick recap of my, I think, fairly bold predictions for this weekend. I've sat on the fence early doors with the championship's favourite scoreline in the derby for Luton versus Watford. My big scorers and big winners this weekend, though, are Blackburn Rovers with a surprise 3-1 at home to a fairly miserly Swansea defence so far this season. And the big one on Sunday afternoon, Sunderland to win 4-1 at Hull City. How ridiculous is that prediction going to make me look? And will Cardiff have a manager in to get a 2-0 win at home to Plymouth? We'll find out all the answers this weekend, but do you agree or disagree with my predictions? Get your thoughts in the comments below and give us your scores for match week 10. If you beat or match my overall score, you'll get a shout out in Sunday night's episode. We'll be live as soon as we can after Holvey Sunderland finishes with our predictions for Tuesday and Wednesday and a recap of all the weekend's action. So get your score predictions in. Have a good one. Hopefully not too many of you will beat me. If you want to stay up to date and see how the rest of the season goes and follow along with all of these prediction shows, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. I'm sure a Cardiff City Manager special is imminent, but if you enjoyed this one, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Check out all the other playlists in the eye above. And don't forget to come and join us live on Friday night 
as we're watching Leeds v Sheffield United in a watch along stream, unless Cardiff City appoint a manager the same night. For now though, have a good weekend, enjoy the championship being back, and I'll see you again here on Sunday night as we do it all again for midweek. Thank you.